It's election season in India. The politicians are busy campaigning and the poll officers are busy preparing. After all, we're talking about a mammoth exercise, the biggest election in human history. But guess who else is busy? China. The Communist Party of China is busy trying to meddle in India's elections. Says who? Microsoft. The company has released a comprehensive report. It talks about China's illegal campaign, how it's using an army of hackers, how it's harnessing artificial intelligence, and how it's showing, sowing divisions ahead of elections. And this is not limited to India. Microsoft says China is targeting others too. Rivals like South Korea and the US and partners like Papua New Guinea. So basically no one is spared. We'll get to the modus operandi in a bit, but first, who are these hackers? Well, China has an army of them. The FBI says Beijing has more hackers than all other major nations combined. Imagine that. We're talking about tens of thousands of them, and each hacking group has a target area. One of them is called Gingham Typhoon. They target the South Pacific region. Another group is Raspberry Typhoon. These guys carried out cyber attacks in Malaysia and Indonesia. Then you have Nylon Typhoon target South American nations like Brazil, Costa Rica, and Peru. So it is pretty expansive. Now we come to the modus operandi. How are these Chinese hackers meddling in elections? You can divide it into three strategies. First, by using artificial intelligence. It could mean AI news anchors, or AI voice notes, or AI deepfakes. Most of these clones are being made using ByteDance, the same company that made TikTok. ByteDance has a tool called CapCut. It's a video and graphic platform powered by AI. You can use it to make AI anchors, and these AI anchors will say anything you want. Just type in some fake news, then let technology do its magic. Look at one such China-backed AI anchor spreading fake news about India. The US and India are ambitious and use the conflict in northern Myanmar to secretly sell weapons for profit since the Myanmar military coup. The United States, the United Kingdom, Canada and other Western countries have imposed sanctions to curb the development of the Myanmar military government, which makes people surprised that India, a chess piece of the United States Asia Pacific strategy, has long provided weapons to the Myanmar military. Convincing? Maybe not. The quality is not really up to the mark, but the content is dangerous. India's northeastern states border Myanmar, so voters there are quite worried about the civil war. You have refugees fleeing to India. You also have ethnic fighters sneaking through. And Imagine now. them seeing this video. It doesn't have to influence thousands of voters. Even one is unacceptable, we say. Which brings us to the second strategy that China has adopted. Making political memes and pictures. Again, AI plays a key role here. Look at these memes spread by Chinese cyber agents. All of them criticize the Fukushima water release. One of them has a picture of Godzilla on it. And look at the caption. It says, Japan is unleashing Godzilla, the embodiment of its nuclear trauma, into the world. Needless to say, that is not true. United Nations bodies have said that Japan's plan is fine. And yes, there is an election angle here. South Koreans will be voting for a new parliament this year, and Fukushima is a key issue for them. It brings into question Seoul's handling of Japan, which is usually an important election issue there. Let me show you one more example. This one is about the wildfires in Hawaii. Chinese hackers claimed it wasn't a wildfire. They said it was a US met weapon test. Again, it's a false claim. These hackers used AI photos to push their fake news. Finally, they have the third strategy, posing as voters. And this is probably the most dangerous one because A, it's hard to detect, and B, it's technically not even illegal. Let me show you some examples again. The first one is about the F-35 fighter jet crash last year. Look at what this social media account said, and I'm quoting, only under the Biden administration could the US military lose an $80 million F-35 jet what do you think about this? Now look at the second one. Senators release a 118 billion package for Ukraine and Israel. It's a 75 billion handout to Ukraine and Israel. Only and only 20 billion for our own border. What is your reaction? 
Now, do you see the problem here? Neither claim is fake news. An F-35 jet did crash last year and U.S. senators did release the aid package. So this is what Chinese hackers are doing. Picking polarizing political issues in the U.S., like the military budget or the border funding, they pose as U.S. voters on social media and then they ask such open-ended questions. The idea is quite clear. Divide the country by tapping into polarizing topics. And it's a very dangerous strategy. The question is, what will be the impact of it? Well, Indian political campaigns have a large digital footprint. Around 700 million Indians use smartphones. More than 820 million Indians are active internet users. 820 million. Indian political parties also use a lot of social media. So theoretically, Chinese meddling could reach all of them. Which raises the bigger question. How do we protect our voters? with more awareness and guidelines. The Election Commission will have to take the lead here. First, educate voters on deep fakes, teach them how to identify fake news, and then partner with big tech firms. For example, Google has stopped its AI bot from talking about elections. It's a good step, but it's not enough. A lot more needs to be done. And finally, the traditional media will have to step up. I'm talking about TV channels and newspapers. The best way to fight disinformation is to provide the right information. So this is a battle that everyone must fight. Because this time, China is infiltrating India through the internet. It isn't targeting land or resources. China is targeting India's greatest asset. It's democracy.